Hello everyone. Well, today we're going to be doing an unboxing. I have here the Naboo personal computer. This was manufactured in Ottawa, Canada. It was used back in the early 80s with the cable system out there. Um, more information can be found online, but I believe it was basically used to help with paying utilities. It was bi-directional for the end user. You're able to download games. You were also able to watch movies. Pretty expensive unit back then. Also had a monthly service fee. Uh, with all that said, it was kind of ahead of its time and very high-end price, so it didn't really take off. However, someone had a pallet of these. I believe there was quite a bit, I don't know, 600 or so, and they were being sold on eBay very cheap. I think initially in the 30s or 40s, maybe $50 initially. Now, I think I picked this one up about 70 in total with shipping about yeah I I'll have to take a look but nonetheless <laughs> a great deal to get a little piece of history and the very unique and limited supplies of these so it's brand new never well I can't say it's never been open I think it's been retaped but the original taping is still on the packages here you can see on the sides or at least in the bottom you know you're definitely looking at taping from over 40 years old perhaps um, but anyways, this is the Nabu. The date on the side here, uh, let's see if we get a good view. Oh, the date code, 16-2-1984. So February 16th, 1984. About 20 pounds, there's a keyboard along with the computer itself. And about 19 pounds, good, good size. So let's take a look at this and see what we got here. Definitely could smell 1980 coming out of this computer box. It uh, has a very distinct smell. Well, here we go. Whew, get a whiff of that. <clears throat> All right, well, it looks like we've got the keyboard on top nicely packaged Let's pull this thing out okay let's get to the side Whew. keyboard Very nice. Let's see the back side of it. The keys themselves. Oh, nice. Very good feel to them. Even the caps has a little click to it for the caps lock. this to the side and continue <clears throat> so we got a little nabu personal computer user guide in color all right Yes, so this might be cables. Sure, it is. Um, hmm, that's pretty cool. All right, it looks like we got some coax. Uh, what is it here? A uh, six. Pin, DIN, type connector. I'm sure it's for the keyboard. And last but not least, the computer. 
computer. It is tight. Here we go. Let's get this unwrapped. Let's let it breathe. I'm sure this was probably tested, but we'll assume it hasn't. Hmm. It's kind of funny, even the rubber band that used to be around here, it's all brittle, it's dried out. So you can definitely tell this has not been opened. <laughs> all right, let that all fall to the ground. Here is this beauty. Uh, I think here we got some dates, part number. All right, well, I am definitely going to open this because I am not trusting the, <laughs> how this thing is going to operate after so many years in storage. But till then, let's get everything cleaned up here and we'll continue. Hey, everybody, we're back again here. So I will have to preface this next part of the video where it's going to be just still photos with me narrating over them. That first portion that you just watched of the video was recorded back in March 23rd, 2023 when I purchased my first Naboo. Uh, yes, I said first because I did buy two of them because they were so great. Uh, but no, seriously though, I, I did get it back in March and I never planned on putting it on the internet. I just recorded it as an unboxing for my own benefit because I thought it was pretty cool to have. And fast forward four months later, I thought, hey, let's put this up on the YouTube channel here. So we'll just go through some of the, the highlights and lowlights of the Naboo, which is not many. Just quickly through this, uh, this photo here just shows the Naboo and the keyboard out of the box looking great. The next photo is the inside of it. Now, with every type of item I receive... I will often open it up regardless if it's new old stock. I always want to know what I'm getting and making sure that it is what it is. And if there's any issues or foreseeable issues, I want to find out ahead of time and be proactive to fixing it. And just be more familiar with what the uh, item is or the uh, device is and appreciate the technology underneath. So that's what this was the reason. But there was also more to it than that, which I'll talk about in a second. So as you can see here, the left side is the power supply, which is labeled underneath the danger main voltage cover. The right side is the PCB with the chips, and then in the back is where the output for the video is. The next picture here is the power supply open. The cover is opened up, and you can see now the fan that's on the top portion of that, which is kind of the problem that we'll kind of, well, we'll talk a little bit about. The... Next photo here is just close-up view of the PCB. So great looking. I mean, it was immaculate, even though, uh, well, not even though. It was just immaculate. It was in the box, and it was stored properly, and I had no problems at all with this thing. I thought it was perfect. No bugs or anything inside. 
Um, here's a close-up view of the power supply section with the fan. So the problem that we were people were experiencing was that the fan that spins inside that little shroud would be stuck at times or maybe clicking because it rubbed against it. And of course, that's a problem because you don't want it to overheat and it's just annoying to hear it click if it was just uh, hitting the shroud. Now, the two that I received, the first one had no issues whatsoever. It spun freely with no problems. The second one had a little bit of a, a click noise. So all I did was open up the fan, uh, took it out of the housing itself, reset it in there with the screws, and it was spinning perfectly. So it was like not balanced, I guess. Don't know how it got unbalanced. However, others who experienced this, as I read online, did a couple of other things. Some had actually bent it just with pure force with pliers others shaved it off some of the uh, bland uh, i mean the blade the plastic itself others would heat it up and try to bend it and mold it back so i don't know i mean i just went the easy route and just said let me reset it and see if it's just not balanced and that seemed to work that was the only issue that i experienced and i think i've heard from everyone here's another photo of it actually running we can see the power light on in front and then we get right to it here. So it's connected to the NABU network, and it's not as easy as just plugging it into your monitor like it is here with the Commodore 1702 that I have. It, there is an adapter that you could purchase, but I emulated that through my laptop, which is not as easy as just plugging it in. There was a couple of things you had to purchase and wire and download software. There's a whole bunch of information I can supply you with in the comments here on how to do such a thing. I wish I had more pictures of that because I really don't want to speak to it without photos. But that is really the, the brains of it all to get it to work. Um, but we'll sh let me just show you exactly how it looks when it's, it's working. And this is what it looks like. You connect to the NABU network as if you were emulating 1980 all over again. And you have some options on here. Unfortunately, the quality may not be the greatest because, again, these pictures were taken not with the intent to put them on the Internet. But I'll use what I can right now to show you. So you got some options. What I want to focus on is the gameplay. So we'll kind of look at the next picture here. Again, it's a hotline number that was there for support with the NABU back in the day. And then we have some more menu options of the games that you can play. The first game here I selected was Pac-Man. And you can see it looks just like Pac-Man on the 8-bit. It's great. Works perfectly. Yes, the 800 excels in front of it, but that's not what's driving it. The NABU is behind or to the left of this photo and... It works with the joysticks from the eight. I mean, from the Atari, and it's plugged into the port. So uh, that was it was amazing to see that running on the on the Nabu. Another game that they had here was Moon Sweeper, and that's the splash screen of that. And then the last game was Cubert, and that worked just like the arcade. Uh, last photo I have is the two Nabus I purchased. So yes, I did get two, like I mentioned. One of them. I actually opened both of them up and tested them, but one of them I'll probably use as a project in the near future. I'm not quite certain what I'll do with it yet. There's a couple ideas I'm floating, but uh, I'll probably have something come up hopefully in the next couple months, and I'll show you more of that. But that's not an Atari base, but it, it has that theme of vintage gaming, so that's why I thought I'd share that with you. I do want to thank you all for taking time to watch this video and have the patience of me narrating these uh, slides at the end. It seems like a family photo of talking over them. I won't have that type of quality going forward, but I just wanted to close this video out to making sure I had something to uh, post up that was reasonably uh, uh, salvageable for someone to watch and not being too bored by looking at photos. Thanks, thank you all again for your time. I do appreciate you viewing, and please subscribe because it does help me continue to grow this channel as I really would like to get more feedback from everyone and try to build off of that. So, Until next time, keep your gaming passion for the past alive by living it today. Take care, everyone.